Hello my awesome Year 7s and welcome to this rather bizarre but hopefully helpful way of doing a lesson when I'm not here. As I said I couldn't be here today, uh, I'm out on a course trying to be a better maths teacher. So you just need to watch this video and then do the questions. First things first, you need to make sure that you finish the work on theoretical probability. That's exercise 8H that some of you started last time and I think some of you are about to start. So remember here are the questions I want you to do, and they can be found in the Essentials textbook. So you want the Year 7 textbook, Exercise 8H, and the questions are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 11. Now just to recap, we never really talked today about what this theoretical thing was talking about. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But when you toss a coin, if you remember, our possible outcomes were just listing all the things that could happen when I throw a coin. And when I throw a coin, I can get a head or a tail. And with a die, we can have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It would be fairly impossible to have the number 7. What about the suits from a pack of cards? And if you remember, again, it was hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. And the possible colours on the French flag were red, white, and blue. When we have something called a sample space, if you remember, and this is the thing about maths, remember, what is it? It's a big, fat trick. The difference between a list of outcomes and a sample space is nothing more than those curly brackets, if you remember. And yes, they do need to be curly brackets, Nelson. So, if you can see here, if we zoom into the coin, what do we see? There's my head. And there's my tail, and that's the list with the curly brackets on the outside. So, to do really well in the post-test, you need to make sure that you remember that a sample space has these curly brackets. Still red, white, and blue. Still hearts, spades, clubs, and diamonds. Still the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. But all of them, for a sample space, are surrounded by those curly brackets. Now you guys were guns at this when we were talking about finding the probabilities for outcomes. So with our coin, if you remember, I think every single one of you knew that the probability written as a fraction of getting ahead was a half. Now what I didn't tell you was this is actually what we call the the theoretical probability. It's a theory. It's what we think should happen. Okay, so... We think that we should get one head for every two coin tosses. We think we get one tail for every two coin tosses. And when we get to our die, we think, or it's a theory, that we will get one, number one, every six times we throw it. Now, I don't know about you, but if you were actually to toss a coin ten times... I would be very, very surprised if you got five heads and five tails. You're thinking about doing it, aren't you? Don't wait, because you're going to do that in a moment. Just watch the rest of this video first. All right, so these ones here, when we don't actually do an experiment, they are called theoretical probabilities, because it's what they think will happen. So remember that. If we think it's going to happen, T and theoretical. They both start with the same letter. And we said that we could do things with words, remember? So the probability of getting ahead, what did we say? Ah, it, yes, so what did we decide? Ignore me, I don't know what I'm talking about there. So remember, PR stood for probability. PR, probability, what's inside the brackets is just telling you what we call a success. Now, that's really weird. We've not used that word before, have we? Success. Right now, obviously, everything in life is success and failure. Right? So when we throw a tail, we're calling that a success. When we have an even number here, we're calling that a success. Because when we get an even number, we're like, yeah, success. When we have a vowel here, we go, yes, success. And if we remember... We don't just have to use things like die or coins. We can actually use words. So when we said here, what was the probability of getting the letter M in the word mathematics? 
How many M's were there? One, two. Out of how many letters? Well, there were 11 letters in total. So in this situation, our probability is 2 over 11. What was the probability of getting an A? How many A's were there in the question? 1, 2. So 2 over 11. So that was the work we were doing. And you're going to need to remember to, if you haven't done the work from chapter 8H, to make sure you do this one. If you finish that, I want you to move on to this idea called experimental probability. Well, uh, hold on a moment. What's the difference between experimental and theoretical probability? Well, let me think. Ah, here are my favourite characters, Pinky and the Brain. Pinky and the Brain, 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 Brain. They were always doing mad experiments, all right? So the brain was always going to try and take over the world and had some crazy experiments. So the reason he did experiments was to try test things out, see what was true. And that's basically what we do in science. So in your science lessons, as you get more into year seven and year eight, you'll start doing experiments to test things. You'll try and work out whether something is true or false. And that's very much what we do in mathematics as well. And as I say here, we do experiments too. Now, are you ready for that coin? Yep, I'm pretty sure this is the time we get the fun stuff to go. So if we were to throw a coin 50 times, wouldn't you expect to get 25 heads and 25 tails? I would, because we think that half the time we should get a head and half the time we should get a tail. Or actually, I did that the wrong way around. But anyway, half the time we should get heads and half the time we should get tails. So with 50 tosses, we would expect 25 heads and 25 tails. But I'm not so sure that happens in real life. So here we go. If you have a coin on you, I want you to draw the following table, which is this table here, into your books and toss the coin 50 times. Take it in turns to toss it. 25 times each. So you can, first person will do 25, the next person will do 25, or you can do... One and then 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 one. So every time you get a head, I want you to do a tally. Every time you get a tail, I want you to do a tally. And I want you to keep going until you have thrown it 50 times. Now, I'm not going to keep doing this over and over again, but you will fill in your table. Now, once you've done that, I want you to ask yourself a question. Did you get 25 heads and 25 tails? I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have. You might have got close. Maybe one group in the room got 25 and 25. But I imagine someone somewhere or some groups would have had more heads and other groups would have had more tails. Now, that, gentlemen, is basically the difference between theoretical probability, where we think half of them should be heads and half of them should be tails, to experimental probability, where when we do the actual experiment, we find out that the probabilities are different. So let's actually try and draw a fake table. Let's see whether I've got some results here. So here is my head, here is my tails, and here is my frequency. Now you're going to say what's frequency or me. I think frequency and tally mean the same thing. Sorry about that. Frequency and tally mean the same thing. So if I did say 50 tosses and I got 30 heads and 20 tails, well, what is now the experimental probability of getting ahead? Well, experimental probability and theoretical probability are worked out in the same way. So the question is, if this is my table, I'm really asking, what is the probability of getting ahead? Well, we look at the table and we say, well, how many heads did I get? I got 30 heads. I got 30 successes because a head is a success. Out of, remember, out of, how many times did I throw the coin? 50. And for those of you who are guns at this cancelling down, you will know that I can divide both of those by 10. To keep them balanced, we have to divide, and that becomes 3 over 5. So, there we go. That's an example. And here is what I'm saying. When, without doing an experiment, so without doing an experiment, we think the probability of throwing a head would be a half. And without doing an experiment, we think the probability of throwing a six 
on a fair six-sided dice would be one over six. Because if you remember, how many sides do we have on a die? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. There's only ever going to be one number six on the die, and so the probability should be one out of six. When we don't do the experiment, we take this good guess. That's why it's called a theoretical probability. We think it's right in theory. But when we do an experiment, we do the experimental probability. The probabilities, the fractions are worked out in exactly the same way. Right? So it's weird because lots of people find this hard, but they shouldn't. So here are the results when I throw a dice 100 times. So the first thing I know is that all of these numbers when added together give me 100. So let's say I got 15 ones, 15 twos, I got a 3 15 times, I got a 4 20 times. I only got 10 fives and I got 25 sixes. So automatically if I look at these numbers, it would look like 6 is the most popular number. So if I now want to work out my experimental probability, I'm just basically using this table to do exactly what you guys have already been working out. What is the probability of getting a 6? Well, how many 6s did I get? I got 25. Out of how many times did I throw the dice? 100. And for those of you who are guns at this, we'll know then that that cancels down to 1 quarter. What about the probability of getting a 1? Well, how many 1s did I get? I got 15. Out of how many times did I throw it? 100. This is a success. And again, for those of you who are guns at this, will know that I can actually divide each of those by 5. And I can cancel down. So that becomes 3 over 20, which I can't cancel down anymore. You guys can do this stuff. You're going to be brilliant at it. But just remember, probability is equal to the number of successes. So earlier, when we were looking at this one here, this probability of 1, we looked at the table, we said the number of successes was 15, because we're only looking for the number of 1s, out of the total number of trials is 100. Now they can actually give you information in a question in lots of different ways, and you're about to start working on the questions in the textbook. So looking at this, first things first, this could be all the lists of numbers I got when I rolled a die 10 times. I got a 1, then a 2, then a 4, then a 5, then a 2, then a 6, then a 3, then a 1, then a 3, then a 6. So if I now want to find the probability of getting a 1, the experimental probability, all it's doing is saying, well, you've done the experiment. How many 1s did you get? Well, how many 1s did I get? I got 1, 2 1s. Out of how many different times did I throw the die? Well, we said 10 times, and that can cancel down to 1 over 5. Whoop! We've already done an example with a table. So you've got to be able to read information from the table. Again, this one now says colours of cars and the number of cars. So the question might be, what is the probability of getting a green car? If it says experimental probability, it just means they've done an experiment. All you're looking at is saying, well, how many of the cars were green? Well, there were seven cars were green. How many cars were there done in total? Right. 21 and 24 gives me 45. Add on the 25 gives me 70. Add on the 20 gives me 90. Add on the 3 gives me 93. Add on the 7 gives me 100. Well, that's nice. Thank you very much. That actually says 7 out of 100, which, if we were being asked for percentage, we could just write down as 7%. Remember, because anything divided by 100, we can just write as a percentage. Can I cancel this down? Nope. That is my final answer. So here is an example of a question from the textbook, and I'm going to do the first one with you. A six-sided die is rolled ten times. Let's just check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, we've got ten numbers. And the following numbers come up. What is the experimental probability? That's just saying, what is the probability? We've done an experiment. We're not doing this in theory. What is the experiment probability of getting a three? How many threes are there, guys? Yep, one out of how many numbers? Ten. Can that be cancelled down? Nope. There we go. What is the experimental probability of getting a four? How many fours are there? One, two, three, four. There are four fours out of how many numbers? Ten. Which we can cancel down because they're both even numbers, so I halve them. 
Can I cancel down any more? No. So there is my final answer. And what is the experimental probability of getting an odd number? Now, when I do these questions, I actually put circles around all the numbers that are helpful to me. So is two odd? No. Is four odd? No. Six? No. Four? No. Five? There's one. One? Yup. Six? No. Four? No. Four? No. Three? Yes. How many circles do I have? I have three numbers that are odd, still out of ten. I can't cancel it down. Guys, you are going to be a gun at this. The more practice you get at doing these style of questions, the more you are going to ace the post-test. Remember, it's down to you to get this statue of me and you built in the school for being the most amazing maths group. All right? If you have any questions, ask your maths teacher. If you need to, go back and watch this video again or bits of it again, but don't waste time watching it. The questions I need you to do are in the Year 7 textbook, Exercise 8A, Questions 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9. So remember, to get the textbook, load up Chrome, go to Cable Essentials Maths, click on there, make sure it's got Year 7. Click on Statistics and Probability, and you want Exercise 8i for this chapter. Oops, now I've got to sign in. So that sucks. So let's just click on that. Eight. 8i, experimental probability, and tap on the exercise, and there we go. Those are the questions you need to do. And as you can see here, I've already done question one for you. All right, so you can just copy those information in. Good luck, behave, be nice, and I'll look forward to seeing you when I come back.